What a great time to be a Giant, be a fan of the Giants. But we have something going here. We're building something special, and you know you can see it from the outside and inside. It's even more beautiful. Reflecting on everything that got me here, just to see that uniform, and you know I, I watched. That's the team I watched the most growing up. My dad was a Giants fan, so once a Giant, always a Giant. For me, it's only a Giant. Welcome everybody to another edition of All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast brought to you by NorthJersey.com and The Record. I'm your host, Art Stapleton. It is Monday, August 21st. We are two preseason games in the books. One left to go, Giants-Jets, the formerly known as the Super Snoopy Bowl. Saturday night at MetLife Stadium, the debut in Jets green of Aaron Rodgers. And I don't believe you'll see many, if at all, any starters for the Giants on Saturday night. I think right now the focus is on the daily preparation, getting ready for September 10th against the Dallas Cowboys at MetLife Sunday Night Football, opening up year two for Brian Dable and the Joe Shane era. On today's show, an interview that I did with... uh, Sterling Shepard today after practice. It was uh, kind of a joint interview. Uh, Bob Brookover from NJ.com was also there to ask some questions, but I figured, you know what? Sterling Shepard's story deserves to be on this podcast and wanted to make sure that I interviewed uh, him today off of his first game back at MetLife since getting injured last year, the ACL week three against the Cowboys. Uh, we've chronicled Shep's journey back and his recovery from the ACL. And I think he was pretty, uh, pretty candid with some of his answers. And after watching him in practice on Monday, I feel the same way as I did two weeks ago when I was told by someone in the organization Shep will be good for week one, is that not only is he going to make this team, but I believe he will have a role in this offense, maybe not to the extent that he has had in past seasons. Look back at week one last year uh, and what he was able to do down in Tennessee to help that win. Long touchdown pass from Daniel Jones. Uh, But I do think that uh, you will appreciate where Sterling Shepard's coming from. Uh, From being the longest tenure Giant, 2016, the last time the Giants were in the playoffs before last year, Shepard not playing in that game last year, kind of turning into a little bit of a cheerleader as a teammate uh, and a coach uh, for helping some of the younger guys at the position, for being there for guys uh, throughout that rough patch in the midpoint of the season. You know, he's a guy who could have gotten ACL surgery and just gone home and done his rehab in the mornings and then left the facility. He did not do that. It says a lot about Shepard. It says a lot about the new regime here who really had no attachment to Sterling Shepard at all. Uh, Joe Shane did not draft him. Brian Dable had not coached him. He coached him for three games. But I think if you know this team inside and out, Uh, You know that Sterling Shepard is a big part of this locker room, is a big part of the fabric of this franchise. I do believe that ultimately when it's all said and done, Sterling will retire a giant. I just don't believe that's going to happen this season. Uh, I think he will have options, and I think being here is his number one option and a priority. Now, we'll get to that in a little bit, but the practice itself today you know Giants are in an interesting situation here they're practicing today tomorrow Wednesday and Thursday they'll have Friday off so it's technically an extra day than what they've had the last two weeks and then they'll play the Jets on Saturday night like I said I believe uh, the only starters that will play if they play at all will be the younger guys I think you may see the the corners you may see Banks and and Hawkins Uh, Maybe you see a couple of the linemen, the offensive linemen, but for the most part, I I think that cameo on Friday night, I think the Giants, Daniel Jones, Darren Waller, uh, and then what you saw from Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams, Kayvon Thibodeau, 
Aziz Ojolari, uh, Bobby Okereke. I'm guessing most of those guys, Xavier McKinney, most of those guys will have the night off uh, and be out there and go through a pregame workout. Uh, but then uh, when it comes down to playing against the Jets, I think you're going to see the Jets playing a lot of their ones uh, and then the Giants kind of laying back a little bit um, and not, you know, putting out their guys knowing that in addition to having the third preseason game, these teams also will meet on October 29th. So there is that feeling of how much do you really want to show them? Uh, the Jets are in a different circumstance. They decided not to play Rodgers in their week two preseason game. So playing him this week is similar to what I would imagine what the Giants did with Daniel Jones last Friday night. Um, some of the things at practice, um, you talk about a defensive line practice Leonard Williams, Kayvon Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence really dominated this practice. Uh, the Giants offensive line, really for the first time this summer, the defensive line just dominated. It was similar to what they did to the Detroit Lions uh, in the joint practices. They were just uh, all over the Giants. Uh, Andrew Thomas is really the only offensive lineman uh, that really held his own, uh, really you know, and even he seemed a little labored. I mean, it was hot today. Uh, I think the tempers were running a little high. Uh, at one point, Leonard Williams pushed over Matt Breda, almost tackled him to the ground. Uh, there was also a step over at one point, uh, Allen Iverson esque by Leonard Williams. Uh, Leonard Williams, who ended up leaving at once the first team was done uh, to the sideline, looked like he was being bothered by the heat and humidity. It was up close to 90 degrees. Uh, feel like temperatures in East Rutherford on Monday. Uh, so a lot more seven on seven than has been done the last couple weeks. And like I said, that extra day, Giants didn't use any cards today. They had a couple install periods. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the team periods, 11 on 11, were dominated by the defensive line, which is some good, some bad. I think it's good. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau really gave Evan Neal uh some work today. Uh, Thibodeau dominated, and I think that'll only be good for Neil in the long run. He, while he played well for a half against Carolina in the preseason game, which was really his first action uh, in about two weeks coming off of that concussion that he suffered in practice. He missed all of Detroit, then missed all of practice last week, ended up getting cleared on the final day, and then played on Friday night. He did not see Brian Burns. He didn't see Justin Houston from Carolina. Uh, he kind of saw their second level of the defensive line. So I think it was very good to see Evan Neal get the best of uh, Kayvon Thibodeau today, and actually Thibodeau got the best of Evan Neal uh, in terms of uh, when they were pass rushers to be held, to be had, uh, Thibodeau really dominated. It's a good sign for Thibodeau, uh, but Neil, I think it'll help him get back up to speed and get ready. Uh, we all know what he's going to have to face on opening night against the Cowboys and his struggles from last year. Uh, I'm sure that'll be, you know, right at the forefront for him going into Week One, uh, you know, three weeks from now. So. That's where we're at. No, no huge things. Uh, make sure you check out my rookie report on NorthJersey.com. Uh, Bryce Ford Wheaton. I know everybody loves Bryce Ford Wheaton and wants to know his chances, so I wrote about that, plus updates on every single rookie of the 2023 class, both drafted and undrafted. I'm out there watching these players. I'm watching them, trying to bring it to you to give you guys a sense of where they fit on not only the 53, but the practice squad, what I'm seeing. So hope you enjoy the rookie report. Uh, it's got a lot of great feedback from you. I know a lot of you are reading it. So, uh, you know, I thank you. And if you haven't read it yet, make sure you check it out. We'll try to do another one next Monday. That'll be the third one. We did one last week. All were, they were well received. So, uh, something cool that we can do considering we're there and, um, you know, monitoring the roster and how things are going. We'll have a couple different stories this week. Uh, the frenzy that is cut day a week from tomorrow, week from Tuesday is the cut day uh, from 90 to 53. 
You'll have the waiver wire. Brandon Brown, assistant general manager, talked a lot about that. I talked to him off to the side. I got some other stuff from from inside the Giants organization that I think you guys will enjoy for what that frenzy is all about. Uh, the Giants did very well last year on waiver claims. They got Nick McLeod and Jason Pinnock. Uh, McLeod is arguably their best special teamer, not named Graham Gano or Casey Kreider. And then... Pinnock has now worked his way into the starting lineup. Uh, he did not practice on Monday, but I saw him running out onto the field. It uh, looks like it'll be a maintenance day for Pinnock, maybe a couple days. No reason to rush him back. He's been out there. Even when uh, the twos were out there on Friday night against the Panthers, he was out there. So uh, give Pinnock a couple days to try to get back healthy. I believe McLeod will be back by week one. I think the Giants are counting on it. And uh, that's where we're at. So without further ado, let's get to our interview with Sterling Shepard after practice. Again, you'll hear my voice, but also uh, Bob Brook over. Uh, so I appreciate him being a part of the interview in that situation. But I think the interview is too good to uh, start cutting it up. Uh, and just giving you my questions. So there are questions that I probably would have asked as well. Uh, so I think the importance is, is getting that sound and hearing Sterling's answers. So without further ado, here's Sterling Shepard. How much did you come into this, not so much proven things to everyone else, but kind of proven to yourself that you were you were really able to come back from this again? Yeah, everything is, you know, proven it to myself. I mean, I... I knew what I was capable of, uh, just, you know, but as far as the knee, um, you know, sometimes you can get down on yourself through that process of you wanting to be stronger, uh, wanting to be able to do what you were able to do before. Um, but I mean, I just kept a positive attitude and, uh, you know, I wanted to come in and show, show that I'm still the same player and that I can still move around just like I always have and I feel like I've done that. When you're out there on, on Friday night, Playing in the game between the lines, what that feel like? Any anything you had to put past you as far as no. memories? No, I, I mean no, I don't. I'm not like a. I'm not big into like the mental aspect of it, like it mentally being on my mind throughout the whole game. When I'm out there, I just play free. You know, stuff gonna happen is just gonna happen. This is what it was meant to be. Um, but all I can control is go out there and do my best and uh, give it everything I got. So I mean. I mean, injuries are a part of the game. Shoot, you just gotta hopefully let this on your side. You know what I mean? I ain't been on my side the last few years, but uh, I, I ain't gonna play any different. I ain't gonna do anything different because what I do out there works. You're, you're a bit of a giant historian. You've been rolling around long enough to know some history since you've been here. Is this the? I mean, obviously you and you and uh. Dell were a good tandem, but is this the most depth this receiving core has ever had that you can see? I mean, yeah, as far as numbers, I mean, you go back into past years, I don't think we've ever had this deep of a um, wide receiver room. I don't even know how many guys we have, maybe like 15, but I've, I've never been a part of a group where we had this many guys. Um, so yeah, as far as depth, is it, it is the, the most packed and crowded room I've been in. Is it natural or wonder where you, you, know, you fit in? You've always shown up here and kind of been, been, a, been a guy. Been yeah, one of the guys. I don't worry about that stuff. Like, I don't ever worry about, you know, what's going to happen. Like, I, I trust God and, um, you know, throughout my life I've been in, in situations like like this or tough situations and I've always gotten through them. So uh, the, I just control what I can control and that's coming out every day, showing what I have and, you know, let everything else take care of itself. I mean, you, I, I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. You said, you know, in the beginning of camp, you know, you knew there was going to be a plan and you understood that and mm -hmm. you, you know, in your mind as well as for them. Was that harder to follow as the days started ticking off for you and as good as you felt? Yeah, I mean, because... You know, I would go one on one off and, uh, you know, I have a really good day and you want to come back and stack another day. But, you know, you have to give your body a rest. And uh, yeah, I'm just one of those guys. I just just love being out there and love being out there with my boys. And I, I don't like feeling like I'm not working as hard as those guys. So, um, you know, it was tough on me just having to go one day on one day off. Um, but I understood that, um, you know, 
in order to, to stay healthy, that was probably the best plan. It's, it's the plan that they came up with, and they've been doing a great job with my recovery process. So, um, you know, it, it was tough on me, but uh, at the end of the day, um, I knew they were doing what was best for me, and unlike past years, went ahead and uh, listened this time around. So <laughs> There are a lot of questions. I'm just one more about it. There are a lot of questions uh, off of the turf, the new turf off of Friday night. Oh, yeah. You've play- practiced in here a couple times and out at the stadium. What, what was your feeling? You're a guy who knew that building about as well as anybody. Mm-hmm. Any early impressions? It's a little better, but turf is turf to me. You know what I mean? Um, you wish you were playing on the same surface uh, every time you step out on the field, but uh, yeah, it's turf, man. At the end of the day, uh, it's turf. Not I don't really, really noticeable. I mean, not not really. I mean, it's hard for me to really remember. I mean, the other one was a little bit, um, I guess, like thinner than than this one that we have now. So I don't know the science behind it, but if that helps, and I guess it's a little bit better. Do you feel like you're all the way back? I mean, to where you want to Do be? Do I look like I'm all the way back? Uh, yes. So, okay. Yeah. So, so knowing that, would it be hard to not be one of those guys getting the most reps on Sundays or Mondays or Thursdays, whatever day it is? Is it tough on me? Would it be tough on you if that's the, the situation? If you you know you you know you're your best and I'm a I'm a ball player, dog. So. I love to be out there on the field. Everybody does, especially in the in the skill position room. Everybody thinks that they can make the play. Everybody was that guy in college, has been that guy their whole life, and they want to be out there on the field. So if the question is, do I want to be on the field, and I, do I feel like I can contribute? Yes. But, you know, that's not my decision. I can control what I can control, and that's doing what I do every day. And I, I leave it up to whoever makes those calls I, I can't make those calls so I don't I don't fret about it, so it, it, it but would it be difficult yeah of course I, like I said I mean I'm, I'm a guy that is on I'm, I'm ready to go I like I I feel like I can contribute so yes it, it, it is tough but I understand it and I understand whatever is for me is for me so um, I'm, I'm gonna put my best foot forward and you know whatever decisions that are made on game day is, is what's gonna happen you know what I mean? I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna lose my focus about it. I gotta, I gotta just focus on doing the right thing and being ready to go. So uh, you never know what happens in this game, and um, I don't wish anything bad on anybody. But you just never know with this game. So you have to be ready at all times. Uh, and when you begin to get into your feelings about certain things, when you get out there, you get a chance. A lot of the times, you let those chances slip. So uh, you just gotta keep a positive mindset and. and, and I'm a selfless guy too, so you know what I mean. I want everybody to succeed, whether I'm out there or not. I want everybody to ball out, so uh, I'm gonna keep a positive attitude and keep the guys positive as well. That's just the You showed that last year to the nth degree by sticking around after getting hurt. Yeah. Um, knowing that, knowing you're loved, you're a love giant, and you love have loved being a giant. Mm-hmm. Um, given the choice between being somewhere else playing and being here and being more in the background role, backup role, you know, which way would you go? Which, what would you decide? Well, I, I'm not in that position, so I ain't gonna even sit here and talk about that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just focused on day to day, showing what I can do, and, and um, you know, leaving that up to God. You know, I, I don't, I don't make those decisions. All I can do is just focus on that next day. And you know, every day I step on that field, I give it everything that I have, every ounce of it. So what happens is what happens. Yeah, and I'll, I'll leave on this one. Just to, did you love last season even though it wasn't? Of course. Okay. I mean, we were winning ball games. It's, it's hard to not enjoy being around here and being around New York when you're winning ball games, uh, regardless if you're out there or not. Obviously, I wanted to be out there helping my brothers and you know, I haven't been to the playoffs since my rookie season, so I, I, I would have loved to be out there with them, but at the same time, I knew I could help in another way, and that's what my mindset was. I had to kind of just shift it to more of like, um, you know, being a helpful helpful vet, and uh, that's what I did. Thanks, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, sir. And as Sterling Shepard said right there, thanks to him uh, for his time after practice on Monday. 
You know, last year he was a part of this, but he was good teammate slash coach slash cheerleader. Uh, definitely was a big part of this run to the playoffs last year. Big supporter of Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones, two of his closest friends. Uh, and I think when it comes down to what Shep is trying to do this year, it's a numbers game at wide receiver. And I know there have been some people kind of speculating, would he make the 53? I don't think there's any doubt that Sterling Shepard believes that he will make the 53. And I don't think the Giants would have taken the approach that they took this summer with him if they did not believe that he was going to be on the 53. The only thing that will keep Sterling Shepard off of the 53, in my mind, is uh, some sort of injury setback uh, over the next you know, two and a half weeks. Uh, but I do think he'll be a part of this offense. I think he has great rapport with Daniel Jones. Uh, and maybe the, the football gods will shine on Sterling Shepard uh, a little bit better than they have the last couple of years uh, with the Achilles and then the ACL. Uh, like he joked, you know, last year they had a plan, but he really didn't listen because he wanted to be out there. Uh, and now this year they had a plan and he listened because he knows – uh, how fleeting this can be, and I don't think there's any part of Sterling Shepard that's thinking once he re-signed, once Joe Shane and Brian Dable decided they wanted Sterling Shepard back on a one-year deal with just over a million dollars, that they were going to give him every opportunity to be on this team, uh, and I think Shep will be on this team um going forward. Looked very good in practice. To me, it doesn't matter. I know who Sterling Shepard is. I don't need to see Sterling Shepard and judge, well, he's going against an undrafted rookie corner and come on green, uh, or if he's going against uh, Adoree Jackson. I- I've seen Sterling Shepard do it at, at certain levels that I- I'm not judging it by that. I'm sure the Giants are taking that approach with him. Um, Now, what would happen if somehow they did cut Sterling Shepard at the 53? I think he would get down to that. And if they signed and offered him the same contract on the practice squad, I guess he would sign in the practice squad. Uh, But I don't believe that they would do that to to a guy who's respected, um, you know, unless they had a reason to. And And I don't think a numbers game is going to be the reason why. Um, So I consider Sterling Shepard part of this 53-man roster, and I think he'll have a role uh, where they're going. A couple upcoming interviews that I was also able to do. We'll either get them out in podcast form tomorrow or Wednesday. Had a good conversation with Paris Campbell about what it's like for a new player to come to a new team and how do you adjust family-wise? How do you get used to everything? He played his first game as a giant inside MetLife Stadium last Friday. But it's a whole thing. He's got a son who's five years old, a daughter who's one. You know, Like I said, young family. What's that like? Talk to Paris about that and his role on offense. Uh, so you'll get that on All In at some point this week. And I spent time with arguably the best offensive player not named Darren Waller or Daniel Jones this summer. And that's... Second-year running back, Jay Sean Corbin, who spent most of last year undrafted rookie on the practice squad. Talk to Corbin, who's looked very good. He's had a very good camp. What would it mean for him over the next week or so to have a legitimate chance to land on the 53-man roster rather than heading back to the practice squad or heading elsewhere? Uh, so two good interviews. I'll decide how I'm going to put them out this week on all in, but I think you guys will both enjoy them. You'll enjoy both of them. Uh, and there are both guys that I think could have roles on this team. Obviously Paris Campbell is going to, uh, have a big role. Uh, don't forget Paris. That is the, the message I would give, uh, to the rest of the league, because I think if Campbell is healthy, I think he will be, uh, a big part of this offense. I think the giants have a lot of plans as to use him, uh, maybe the way they would have used Kadarius Tony last year, if Tony were ever able to stay healthy and get on the field and you know know the specific routes that that they were asking him to run. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. But again, thanks to Ster- Sterling Shepard. Hope you guys enjoyed that interview, and we'll be back at practice all week. We'll have a couple more all ins this week, uh, heading into 
uh, the Jets preseason game on Saturday. So appreciate you being all in, and we will be all in as always. <laughs>